In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the Mesh Tools Edge Spline Offset feature combined with Expresso to create this delayed animation technique. So let's jump in. We're going to go to the geometry menu and we're going to add a platonic. This is going to be our base shape. We're going to go to Insidium Mesh Tools and we want the Mesh Tools Edge Spline. If we put this in as a child of the edge spline, it creates the splines along the edge. Let's go into the edge spline display and turn off the gradient to just see a single color. And let's hide our platonic. Okay, so we've got that edge. Now the edge spline can do lots of different types of uh, spline modes based on the input geometry, but we're gonna keep it for this one in the standard, which is just gonna create a spline for every edge. And then we're gonna go down here where it says scale offsets. And this gives you an option of how many offsets you want to create. So let's say we have five of these. Okay, you can see it creates a new spline and offsets that from the default object. Then we have a offset size. So we can increase that. It's good. And then we have these rotation values. And this is what we're going to use to create this offsetting delayed spline animation. We'll use Expresso for that. First, we need some animation. So we're going to go to the platonic and right click, use animation tags, and we're going to put a vibrate tag on it. Let's enable rotation and we'll set 360 in each axis and frequency of 0.1. So it's not too fast, but that's just going to give us that nice little rotation animation. And what we want is each consecutive spline to be slightly delayed from the main platonics animation. And we'll do that with Expresso. So I'm going to create a null, just put that down here and call this Expresso. And this can be done on anything. The reason I use a null is in case I want to use some user data, I'll create a user data channel and I want this as a controller separate from the actual geometry, just in case it's easier to find in the scene. So we're going to right click, go to programming tags and we'll drop in an Expresso tag. It brings up our little Expresso window and this is what we're going to use. So we want to get the rotation from our platonic. So we put the platonic in here. Let's bring this down. And we want to select that, go to coordinates, and you can see we've got our rotation channels. So we can just select the each channel and drag them on. Like so. Excellent. So we've got our channels that we can output to. And then we want the edge spline. Let's drag this in. And we want these three rotation channels here. Now they're a vector, so we can't drag those in like we could with the with the individual channels from the platonic. But we can access them if we click on the little blue uh, square here. Go to Object Properties, Rotation, and you can see these channels are here. So we want H, P and B. So now we've got our channels as inputs. And between those, all we want to do is we want to put a math node. So with the little magnifier, select that, type in math, and we want the math add node. Sky and control drag to create some copies. And then we can pipe these in. So we get H to input one, output to rotation H input, and the same again for the other channels. This, that, and that. And now you can see it has slightly offset these, but we want to control it. So if we select all these, we have our function, and we set that to multiply, which puts it back to exactly how it was. And then we can just simply put in a value of one push play and you can see they're all slightly offset from the main rotation of the platonic and obviously it's a controller so you can do more so put two or something you can see it 
completely offset. So they're all doing different rotations now. Minus one. So you've got a fair range of control you can do playing with this, but that's a really quick and easy way to set up a neat offset dynamic looking rotations from the main parent spline using the edge splines offsets.